Frameshift drive charging. Shift drive charging.
System scan complete. the Omega Grid secrets revealed. ACT has released details about a plan by the Lords of Restoration to frame Hadrian Augustus Deval as the leader of the NMLA. The information was extracted from the NMLA's Omega Grid network and published by Captain Saskia Landau. It was Senator Ursula Torquatis who devised a scheme to undermine the Imperial family and turn citizens against them by exposing a Deval as the NMLA mastermind. Hadrian Deval was seen as the logical choice since many viewed him as an extremist through his prior association with Nova Imperium, though Emperor Arisa Lavigny Deval officially pardoned him in 3306. The Lords of Restoration used a virtual doppelganger of the Emperor, indistinguishable from authentic transmissions, to convince the Senate that she was communicating from a safe location. A similar doppelganger was developed to replicate Hadrian and was used to send orders to NMLA allies such as the Landgrave of Madrid. This is how they planted evidence, discovered in April 3307, that Hadrian had converted to Neo-Marlinism and was determined to wipe out all other devils. Yet, despite triggering an unsuccessful federal attack in the Parisa system, the accusation was not verified or widely believed. Months later, the Lords of Restoration tried to kill Hadrian and Lady Astrid before their son Hector could be born, fearing the continuation of the Deval dynasty. But other senators moved the family to a secure location, beyond the reach of their agents. Hadrian Deval has publicly thanked ACT for uncovering this information and officially absolving him of all suspicion in this matter.
Hudson contravention sparks federal protests. President Zachary Hudson's proposal to remove the eight-year limit on his term of office has led to public unrest on many federal worlds. Supporters of Shadow President Felicia Winters have taken the lead in protesting against the Hudson contravention, which is currently being debated in Congress. The situation has been extensively covered by news feeds across the Federation. Federal Free Press, as always, Felicia Winters is the only grown-up in the room. She has rightfully objected to the sitting president's attempt at throwing away the rulebook. Repealing the 77th Amendment would be a fundamental blow to our millennia-old democracy. Sol today, what's the choice here? Retain Hudson for a few more years until things calm down, or hand power to Winters and watch the federal government weaken and collapse under a weight the shadow president cannot possibly bear. The Federal Times, moderate Republican voters are taking a dim view of the Hudson contravention, primarily because it denies them the option to choose a new administration. Vice President Jerome Archer, Secretary of State Lana Berkovich and Grand Attorney Edwin Espinosa are the most likely presidential candidates, but none of them will be able to run for office in 3309 if Hudson gets his way.
Battle of Summerland ends NMMA threat. Pilots Federation alert. The Empire has carried out reprisals against the rogue faction Dark Water Inc. in the Summerland system. The private military firm had trained NMMA terrorists and held Emperor Arasa Lavigny Deval captive on the orders of a cabal of senators named the Lords of Restoration. Dark Water mustered an impressive armada, but these were no match for a combination of superpower forces and independent pilots. Colonel Ronan Brock, the mercenary's leader, was killed during the fighting when he fled from the Onyx Storm megaship and was shot down by Imperial auxiliaries. Emperor Arasa praised all those who helped destroy Dark Water and declared, let the Battle of Summerland mark the victorious end of our bitter war against both the NMLA and the traitors who sought to destabilize the Empire. ACT clarified that although there may always be neo-Marlinist extremists, the large-scale threat of the NMLA has finally been nullified. All data obtained from the terrorists' Omega Grid network has now been shared with the relevant security agencies. With Dark Water eliminated, the Empire has installed a new controlling faction into the Summerland system. The Praetorian Vigil will report directly to the Emperor and govern in her name. The Summerland Patrons Party will redeem combat bonds and provide other rewards at the Starport Henry O'Hare's hangar. A permit exemption allowing all independent pilots to enter the Summerland system will remain active for the next two weeks. Corp augments starport services. Pilots Federation alert. 
Further deliveries to Alcor and Colonia are required to add new facilities to the Colonia Bridge starports. The Colonia Bridge project is currently halfway through its final phase, which takes place over a four-week period. In the previous week, pilots supplied large quantities of performance enhancers, personal weapons and survival equipment. A press release from Brewer Corporation outlined the next stage. Thanks to the hard work of many independent pilots, we have established a Pioneer Supplies outlet, a crew lounge and a search and rescue contact at the five starports along the travel corridor between the core systems and the Colonia region. For week three, our aim is to continue constructing the stations by installing a material trader, concourse bar and mission contract services. These will rely on shipments of computer components, liquor and water purifiers. For pilots who deliver these to McDonald's settlement in the Alcor system and Jack station in the Colonia system, Brewer Corporation will be pleased to offer a white engine drive color and a white carrier drive color alongside payment in credits. Once this week's initiative concludes, week 4 will aim to complete the Colonia Bridge starports with a full range of services. Man reprimanded over Riot conflict. The Alliance Assembly has delivered an official rebuke to its Prime Minister following the recent skirmish in the Riot system. There have been heated debates following the conflict between Riot Mining Coalition and Sirius Corporation. This was triggered by the Megacorp's unpopular attempt to establish a presence in the system as an anti-Zeno defense partner. Councillor Nakato Kane led a motion to censure against Prime Minister Edmund Mann, which successfully passed with a plurality of votes after some abstentions. The strongly worded reprimand focused on disregarding the Alliance's principles by unilaterally forcing cooperation with Sirius Corporation. After Mann formally accepted the reprimand, Councillor Kane addressed the Assembly. This body does not have the right to govern its member systems without their consent. The Strategic Defense Pact must become civil legislation rather than a military contract, so it can be passed as law. I call upon Li Yongrui to agree to these terms, or else to abandon the pact and remove Sirius Corporation's forces from the Aelioth, Aranpox, Dijian and Listi systems. Man re